Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about an independent Linux distribution. That is very lightweight. And yes, I know everybody claims to be lightweight, this, that, and another for Linux. And some of them are lighter weight than other ones. But as a whole, they are pretty much so lightweight. They're not resource intensive hogs like some other operating systems that are out there. And we all know who we're talking about for the most part. But either way, um, this is a very lightweight one that uses uh, Lilo for the bootloader, not Grub. Uh, it doesn't have a package manager at all whatsoever. And it uses Jason's window manager, which is one of the older window managers for M Linux. And here is what it looks like. This is the desktop. Now, when you go to install it, it you download it into the, the ISO from SourceForge. Uh, just type in uh, 4M Linux over there for the letter M and then Linux. And I'll also put the link in the description. But you go there and you download it. And you go to install it. You create your bootable ISO. Uh, what I did today is I put it in a virtual machine. And when you go to install it, if you go here up at the upper left hand corner, uh, you go to 4M Linux category down here at the bottom is an installer. It will launch an installer script right here. I'm not going to press enter because what it's going to do is it's going to launch kind of an NCurses installer. And the NCurses installer is going to look for the VDA or SDA, not VDA, so which is a standard, you know, hard drive, which you would have on bare metal. So it, it won't look for the VDA. I mean, I could probably go in and edit the script and make it look for this. But for the purposes of today's video, I could use the live distribution, the live ISO to show you what it comes with, because it's literally what it comes with. It literally installs a full entire live ISO onto your hard drive because it's void of a package manager. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is that if you want to install anything, and by the way, this actually comes really, really loaded with a lot of applications. In fact, a lot of redundancy, but it would have to in order to try to capture the likes of most people. And so what they've done in a lot of it, you'll see they've put, especially like the games or the, the video and editing softwares, they've put, um, like text editors, that kind of stuff. They put the most popular ones in there that people use that are lightweight, not the bulky, you know, ones that are not. That's why you won't find very many of the, you know, KDE ones in here. Uh, you'll find the, the light XFCE open source ones. So at any instance, if you want to install something in particular that's not already installed on this, well, then you're going to have to build it from code, meaning go to the GitLab, Git, GitLab or GitHub source and download it from source and compile it from source. And of course, that means that you're going to have to pay attention to the dependencies that's required by said package and download and install and compile those said dependencies as well. So bear in mind, you're not only looking at just the base software that you want, but any dependencies, unless there are ones that are already installed by something else that may be already on here. So that's definitely worth a check. So just keep that in mind. This is definitely a distribution that is geared for more older hardware. Uh, from what I understand in reading on the web page, and if you go to forumlinux.google that, you'll find its web pages. Uh, it will tell you that it actually can run in as little as 128 megabytes of ram i think that'll pretty much will fill it up but you know or 256 i can't remember but it's for older 32-bit processing hardware supposedly it runs well i don't know that that's true because i'm looking at the ram usage here in this conky which is uh 1.90 if you look at it but i find conkeys to not be accurate um let's see if it's got htop installed and it does. And right there, I'm using 266 megabytes of RAM. So once again, 128 will not work. So I don't, I think it may have been an earlier version that they, that that, that was posted for and not these newer versions of it. So um, I definitely with uh, four gigs of RAM or even two gigs of RAM, you can get away with this very easily, uh, very nicely. So for anything that's older out there that might have one or two gigs of RAM or, you know, two or four gigs of RAM in it, uh, you're going to be running quite comfortably and if i expand this to i mean to make this window a little bit bigger um 
you'll see it doesn't have a whole lot running in it right right off the bat. I mean, it's kind of cool. Kind of cool. So, basic look at the desktop is this. Uh, when you look at the desktop, you're going to see the icons that are typical. There's no, no explanation needed for those guys on the desktop. You got a panel across the top, and you got a dock at the bottom. Now, the dock at the bottom has i desktop on and off which i think it toggles between a minimal desktop and now well, let's take a look and see what that does with h top see if that decreases some of our oh yeah it brought it down to 213 megabytes of ram for the lightweight usage of it so yeah um you can toggle between a more intensive resource intensive desktop or a lighter one I mean, a regular, you know, desktop that it comes with. So, in either one, either way, both of them are pretty doggone... Oh, that's cool. Both of them are pretty doggone um, lightweight, you know. So, looking... Uh, if you right-click on it, you can get a desktop preferences here. And you can switch your backgrounds. Which I believe 10 was the one that I had on before. Then you had 4, 5, 6. This one looks pretty cool. Let's check that one out. And that one looks kind of cool. Yeah, uh, I don't like it as much as I like the, the 10 ones. I mean, they got some pretty cool, not very many desk wallpapers in there to customize with, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, this one I like. Uh, but either way, so you can toggle between your desktops there on the bottom. Then you have your terminal, which is going to be probably your XFCE4 terminal, maybe? Oh, LX terminal. Sorry, it's LX terminal. But either way, once again, lightweight terminal. Uh, text editor is probably going to be something like, yep, it's going to be Leaf leaf pad i think yep leaf pad for sure so i mean it uses lightweight apps calculator calendar which is osmon i believe osmo sorry osmo yep it's gonna be osmo um then for the web browser it's probably got a couple multiple ones installed and yep this is pale moon and it's not my default but i'm gonna go ahead and say yes what the heck and what version of pale moon is this gonna be we're looking at 31.1 so there's Pale Moon that's installed up there that we know of so far. We're going to close all tabs. Uh, mail clients, probably Thunderbird or not Thunderbird, but um, oh, Silfeed, Silfeed, Silfeed or whatever. So anyhow, there's that. And continue with, yeah, I want to hit cancel. Yeah, we're going to close out of it. Um, audio player, let's see what it opens up with. Oh, GQ MPEG, okay, and then for your video player, Celluloid, which is uses MPV, um, screenshot shooter, that's your thing, uh, screen recorder is already installed, so you can record your screen, your desktop, also it's got webcam stream software, and of course you can turn your conky on and off, which I'm going to kill the conky because... I don't like conkeys anyhow. So that's what's on your dock. It's in the center of the bottom. Then at the top, you have your panel, which on the left-hand side has got your application launcher and some uh, uh, quick uh, quick access icons here, which normally you would have like, you know, most places, but they have it in the dock. So some of them put like the Firefox, your file browser, and that kind of stuff in here. So um, your file manager on there and, and that kind of stuff. And they got the volume over here, which for muting and unmuting but they have the volume icon over here in the tray uh in the system tray which is quas mixer so that's kind of cool that that's you know there then you got your two virtual desktops and on the left has got you got your clipboard manager which is probably clipman or something like that and then you have your user which if you click on that will give you your desktop any tasks and any notes that you would want which is osmo again uh, then you got your network connection that you have. And then next to that, you have your volume manager uh, again. And then you have your system monitor right here next to your time. And then, of course, you got your time, which has got your calendar as well. So that's the basic of the panel. Now, under for applications, we'll take a look and we'll see you got your bash, your TCLSH. Under internet, you got NetSurf, HexJet, Silfeed, which is your mail stuff, your transmission for your torrents. Uh, you got torrent which is uh you can turn on privacy and tracking that way uh become you know uh, go a lot of it's usually for black web stuff you know dark web stuff but you know it's also for security purposes as well and you got your bluetooth and then gnome ppp and then you've got gwit 
and then you get for office you've got abbey word numeric last paint for the different notepads that you have you've got leaf pad beaver and, and S- sky sight calculator calendar you got sticky notes and then for nerds here are your different text editors you got vi and mg nano mcedit which is uh midnight commander editor uh hun spell and i don't know what the other one is for maintenance you have for data you got for backup you have you can do it manually automatically or you can do imaging on it for recovery you've got test disk you got photo recover and then dd uh, gnu dd rescue and then of course you can wipe it files you have midnight commander i don't know what triple n is but that is interesting wow cool um you can play with that one a little bit but anyhow you've got that do, 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 do. PC Man FM, you have Engrampa for your file archiver, X archiver, and file roller, which, like I said, there's some of the redundancy right there. For CD DVD, you've got ISO Master, FL Burn, CDW, and you can eject for partitions. You got GNU Parted. For uh, for Master Boot Records, you have F Disk, CF Disk. For GPT, you have G Disk and CG Disk. You have regular G Parted, G Parted, and then you have TrueCrypt. For monitoring, you've got network monitor, sidar, H top, uh, netwatch, IP traffic, wave, wave and monitor, and IF top. So I mean, uh, for virtualization, you've got AQEMU and four MEMU uh, for miscellaneous tools. Oh, they've got an antivirus on here, which is Clam antivirus. They've got GNU Grub, Smart uh, GTK hash, which I'm not sure what GNU Grub would be for. Uh, there's no Grub. It, must be install. Oh, got you. Uh, yeah, I guess it's where you can edit Lilo um, on there. Um, and then smart for checking your hard drives, unit booting, and DMI decode uh, for that. Under multimedia for Let's Play, you got celluloid, legacy media player. You got GQMQ for MPEG player or for, for audio, FL music, mini tube, music. Uh, MIDI and mod, you have T-MIDI, Fluid Synth, XMP, XMDP, wow. Uh, wait, was that? Oh, for a minute I thought I saw Cakewalk. I'm like, what? No way. Uh, for Let's Rip, you've got Asunder, CDA2 Wave, Make M- uh, Make MKV. For Let's Mix, you got Quaz Tools, which you have also Mixer, Pebble Control, All Mix, and then, of course, you got some sample stuff. Uh, Let's View, for picture viewers, you've got gpic you've got uh, your pdf viewer uh, and zgv for editing you've got image magic converse screen audacity sound studio and hyper vc for devices you've got wx cam gtk cam and xane and zbar cam so lots of um webcamming software on here for servers um you, for many servers it's already installed you have all of it you can do s you know oh, here's your ftp sshs all those firewall all that kind of stuff for tools, you have GFTP, Putty, TransWeb, Tiger VNC, Gersync. Uh, for terminal user interface, you got FTP, IRC, SSH, SSL, SQL, LVM. I mean, you've got all kinds of stuff. You can even set up for LAMP server too. So, I mean, there's so much stuff, so much already installed out of the box, but it would make sense because, as again, there is no package manager for this. So, you basically have to have a lot of stuff already installed out of the box so for con for under the mystery which is a gaming section you know that you don't know really what's in here until you download it and install it. but you got 248 you got all these games here for console ones and then for x toys you got eyes nico penguin snow uh x games you got those for playing for your x server tcl games you have that you know fltk games you've got those export i mean they're emulators you got fuse you got dos box under dos box you've got Jumpman, Mario, Dave, Pac-Man, Wolf 3. I mean, you've got lots of games. Under extensions, now this is where you could add stuff too as well. For Office, they've got LibreOffice, GIMP, Inkscape, Bluefish. They've got Vim, GVim, plugins and fonts, NetApps. These are all your Mozilla. you got Firefox. Oh, you even got Thunderbird and SeaMonkey in, in here. Chromium, Vivaldi, Pale Moon, Qubit Torrent, Dropbox, and FileZilla. For media apps for players under here, you've got Audacious, VLC, M Player, Exine, SM Player, SM Tube. I mean, just tons of stuff. 
for system administration apps. You got Double Com, Virtual Box was already in here. Ventoy, Get GUI for game packs. Oh Lord, even more games, just tons of games through emulators and Linux Inc. for Underwind for apps they've already got installed. Underwind, you've got Seven Zip, Seven ZFM, uh, Notepad, Notepad Plus Plus Plus. DVD, Shrink, InfraQuarter, XChat for games, Super Tux, Tux Racer, GLTron. Just tons of stuff. Under Java, they've got some stuff. Electrum. What the heck? Electrum. Electrum. Oh, that's Bitcoin and Litecoin. So even your cyber currency is on here. I mean, it's insane what they've got installed in this for a very lightweight desktop. Um, of course, for the 4M Linux, you can go to their website, get help and FAQ license updater so you can update it and installer uh, for settings uh, you, this is where you can set your display and any of your hardware um, settings for for it to work um, for networking of course you got your configuration files for anything networking there for desktop you can turn on your bar off and off move it up or down you know wallpapers you know fonts on and off for big fonts 3d on and off you know just you know, restart X, you can do probably start Compton or anything with Compton that has to do with Compton. Just tons of, tons of stuff. Default apps you can set here. You can change your locale here. And then, of course, is your power session at the bottom with your power off, reboot, lock screen, reload, Jason's window manager, and, of course, exit. So, I mean, this is a, a, a quick look at 4M Linux. Like I said, this is not a... A new to user uh, intended Linux distribution. This one's actually more intended for the more seasoned or veteran type Linux users that are looking for something really lightweight that are want a minimal footprint. This is definitely a good operating system to start with. If you guys have used it before and know that there's something that I left out about it, please don't be afraid to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And you guys keep on doing what you do. You guys keep on Linuxing and have a great day.